So we have a 6S2P around 6 amp hour bank of 2.9 amp hour cells. I charged them up to 15.13 volts. You can follow the leads. They're just going to the battery. And then we have this 3000 watt power inverter with, ignore the mess, this heat gun, which is rated for 1500 watts. Crank to the max. Yet again, follow the wire so you know there's no trickery. Okay. So we're going to crank this to the max and watch this voltage, okay? Turn it on. Start the clock. Around 1 minute 23 seconds of pure 1500 watts. And it still rebounds back to 14 plus. Alright, so let's try this one more time. Please excuse the mess, I've not used this bench in a while. But here we have a Term Lab Magnum. You can follow the yellow cord going to here. For the clamp, what I've done is I hooked it into the power inverter for the sub. I hooked it also into the power inverter to get the 110 AC voltage. From over here, for the battery, it's just going directly into the battery. As you can see, the battery is at 15.2. The only things that are connected to the battery that are out of picture are for these two power supplies. But as you can see, they are off. They're only hooked up, one, to get this measurement, and two, I charged it up prior to this video. So basically, I have it hooked up just like you would have a term lab hooked up in your vehicle. So this power inverter is acting as the amplifier. This 1500 watt heat gun is acting as your subwoofer with the coil and all of that. Your battery is acting as the battery. So here we have a 6S2P 2.9 amp hour skid bank. Let's see how it does with around 1500 watts. Ready? See if I can get them both in frame. 
flying 1040. Multimeter went off, but that's okay. We got plenty of time. It's not plummeting to 12 volts with 300 watts. Oh, there's 1150. 1160. Oh, that's cranking up now. 1250, 1250 watts. And it still rebounds right back to 14 plus. As you can see, these are still off. I'll turn them on now. You can watch the voltage climb. But that was off. Okay, same test once again. This time I have this dialed back to roughly 300 watts. The 6S1P battery. The only thing that I thought that could have made this not a 100%, you know, accurate test is that this amplifier, even though it's not powered on, was still hooked up. So in my head, I thought, okay, there is capacitors in there. So maybe it was adding a little bit of capacitance, altering the test. So as you can see, I disconnected, a.k.a. cut them. Power supplies are off. The battery also, keep in mind, is not even fully charged. But in his test, it was around 15.2, I believe it was. Still term lab set up. And like I said, this is dialed back to roughly 300 watts. So let's see how long it takes for it to hit 12. over while the test is running you can follow all the wires there is no trickery Now this is not, you know, shooting shots at anybody. I just saw Vibration Audio's test and was like, there's no way 300 watts made it plummet that fast. Now I've been told by numerous people, side-by-side -side tests, you know, I've seen it all. There's no difference between my cells and the restudded cells that are, you know, going around. That's what I've been told. But as you can see, there's there's something not adding up. Whether, you know, the testing that was done isn't accurate or maybe the cells aren't as good as the ones that we have. Now, I'm not going to say that. 
because if I do, people will, you know, interpret it as I'm shooting shots at someone when I'm not. I'll just let the, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. You be the judge. What's going on here? Still going. <clears throat> Once again, I'm not trying to shoot shots at anybody. Richie, Brandon, Leroy, all those guys are cool. Nothing wrong with our cells. Nothing wrong with their cells, I would hope. But somewhere, somehow, something isn't adding up. So we're going to do a little side-by-side -side of a 5 amp hour, or some people may say a 5.5 amp hour bank of C-Max. There's no charger. No amplifiers hooked up. The only things that are hooked up are the term lab, which you can follow all the cords so that we can see real time power. And the heat gun with the inverter sitting at 15.2. I'll start the test at 40, 50 seconds, and we'll see how long it holds. And. So we're pulling six to eight hundred watts. Dropping to fourteen within a matter of seconds. I'll stop the test at 13 volts so that I don't eat up too much memory on my phone. Thirteen, wait, thirteen. Okay, so same exact test as I literally just ran with the C-Max, but this time we have roughly six amp hour of skibs. So the capacity is very close to the same. The charger is off. Everything is still the same. Let me go ahead and reset the term lab. You can see all the cords unaltered. I haven't messed with the setting on this, so it should be very similar wattage. But we will see. Don't.
Same thing, six to eight hundred ish watts. Same thing as before, I'll go ahead and slap it as soon as it hits 13, just so that I'm not eating up a bunch of my phone memory. But, you should be able to tell a difference. Six versus 5.5 amp hour, or six versus five amp hour, however you wanna look at it. Once again, I would like to finish this off with I'm not trying to shoot shots at anybody. I don't know why anybody felt the need to compare the two when there's already been multiple, multiple tests proven. But just to keep everything fair and even, I will be sending vibration audio the banks that were used in these tests besides the c-max bank because i am sure he's got plenty of those everything including hardware that i used every single piece that i use specifically so that there are no variables that so just as promised i have the success 1p and the 6S2P of the 2.9 amp hour cells along with all the hardware that I used and I will be sending them out to Richie for testing. This is the condition at which they left me. So I don't really know what his intended, you know, point of doing these videos are. But as you can see there's no no damage or anything. Okay, we'll see where this goes.